One thing that's very interesting in your investment portfolio right now is Tesla. Now, I remember when you and I were in, Silic uh, in Sun Valley, I should say, in June, you talked about the need for this period of peace and quiet so the company could get itself into the execution mode. Now, I'm not going to ask you to, uh, to handicap how well Mr. Musk has performed that task because I think we can, we can sort of assume he hasn't done particularly well. What I would ask, though, is at what point do you, as the larger shareholders after Musk, become vocal about the fact that the company is not executing on what it said it would? Well, that was certainly an extraordinarily unsuccessful plea at the time <laughs> you were talking about. One needs to be modest about that. I, I think, though, we need to differentiate the company from him in that context. And, of course, the irony is that the period you were referring to was precisely when production of the three was finally beginning to be achieved. And we think that has to be our main task. Uh, but we do also think it's appropriate to discuss with the company, not in any way try and dictate, uh, whether Mr. Musk's comments and the like do help forward with that mission. And in many ways, it, what we'd most likely do is it's enabled him to step back from having to feel so uh, driven to comment. But you, you made an interesting point, which is that the key is to separate Mr. Musk from the company if you are going to see that forward motion. Does that mean, as holders, you would like to see him have a less active role or potentially no role with the company? Well, we were talking about Amazon before. I, I think the comparison your colleague suggested, God, I think, but you know, I, I think you can be in the background. I mean, I, I don't know about you, but I can't remember the last time that Jeff Bezos turned up on a quarterly call, let alone felt the need to talk about analysts, even though I suspect he's got some quite big thoughts about them. And I think you can take the pressure off yourself as well as the company by stepping back in that manner. Let's move on to healthcare, another area where you've been very successful as investors, Illumina, obviously one of your bigger holdings. We seem to be at this inflection point in healthcare where you have the, I suppose we're at the beginning of the new wave of drugs coming through, whether the genotherapies or immunotherapies, really could be game changing for sort of human progress. At the same time, you have this uh, bifurcation of the, the companies where the big pharma companies are no longer really doing R&D, they're really instead trying to buy the best science. How do you as stock pickers go out and find those companies that are going to be the next Illumina or the next Roche? Well, I think you describe it very well. That that is the twin challenge. There's this extraordinary opportunity with the science opening up, and you know, finally understanding human biology. Hopefully, over the next ten to twenty years, but I'm not sure that in most cases it is going to translate into a industrial strides platform in the way it has and I think in a sense that is what is different about Illumina from our perspective and why we've been happy to have larger holdings because it is by definition the platform uh, until you know anything disturbs that you know if you are doing 90% of the sequencing that's done in the world then I think that's very different from trying to construct a business model about comparatively rare diseases so that's the challenge we face and the more we can identify similarly sized platforms would be the key to us having bigger investments in that area. And a lot of those platforms are going to be private at this point because they're sort of small, very, very early stage biopharma. How do you go out and look at private companies and how is that different from picking stuff in the public market? I think it's less different in healthcare, if I may say so, than probably anywhere else because, as you know, it's historically been true that companies can go public quite earlier in healthcare and that still seems to be happening despite the generalised scepticism about going public. And I think the challenges are not definably different from the unquoted to the quoted at the moment. You know, a company like Denali, which has sort of gone from one to the other, I'm not sure that that much has really changed. But in general, outside healthcare, I have to say that I think that it's much easier for companies these days to invest for the long run and to take risk as private companies. So, you know, even in Europe, I think the context of what Spotify has done has been fascinating. That our perception is that Daniel Ek felt that if you're going to be challenging Amazon, Apple, Tencent, taking on the music labels, trying to legitimise streaming, that you couldn't really do that if you were reporting on a 13-week cycle to public markets. So I think very often you're better off saving private, and we don't have a problem with that at all. OK, so let's just wrap on this. Um, a lot of people come through here and say, yes, we have very high leverage at the moment, there's less covenants, the equity markets have been ripping for years and years and years. 
But it's different this time. It's not 2008. Everything's changed. You've been in the market a long time. As Scarlett mentioned at the top, you have a very long-term view of investments. Has anything really changed? Over my career, the two elements that I think really have decisively changed. And, you know, there are, of course, through history elements that we both know stay the same, but equally it's the differences that are important. The two elements will firstly be globalization, which has totally altered the scale a company can be. And the second, which, you know, has been very much where we've been focused for the last dozen years or so, has been the notion of increasing returns to scale. And to me, that is profoundly different when I started in the industry, when on the whole, returns as you got bigger got lesser. I think that is the biggest transformation. And I think it's one reason why growth has done better than value over the periods you're talking about.